building power apps just got a lot easier. I am so excited about this new Express Design capability. With Express Design, we can do things like sketch out on a notepad the design of an application we wanna build, upload that and have it actually automatically create a power app based off of that sketch design for us. It also gives us integration with Figma, which is a tool that allows us to sketch out a user interface and we can take that Figma file and actually upload that into Power Apps and it will create an application in Power Apps based off of our Figma file. So this is not only another way to reduce the barrier to entry to building a Power App, but also gives us a way to lead with the user experience and user interface approach first by designing that out pixel perfect in Figma and building the Power App based off of that Figma file. So I'll walk you through how it works right after this. Let's start by showing how we can upload an image of a form and turn that into a Power App. So when you log into make.powerapps.com, you should see two new options here on the home screen under the Start From section. So we have the options now to start from image and from Figma. So we'll walk through the Start From Image option first. We're gonna select that. And you see when it pops up, it's giving us a little bit of guidance about how this functionality works. Now this is the first release of Express Design and behind the scenes, just so you know how this is working, is it's using Azure Cognitive Services AI Engine in the object detection to be able to actually detect the elements in your form. So similar models to what we use for some of the pre-built AI builder models, say to like be able to recognize invoices and all of that. So because of that, we have to train the model to identify many different types of forms. So it just simply isn't able to handle every single form use case. So that's why we have a little bit of guidance here as to what type of forms we can use. So it needs to be clearly legible in only one page forms. And it has to have a light background to be able to recognize and detect the objects correctly. Now, with that said, we don't recommend uploading really complex forms with say colored backgrounds and images and things like that in it or multi-page forms. But there is a certain segment of form types that this is really beneficial for. I know we have all been there where we've probably got a printout of a single page paper form and asked to turn that into an electronic form. So that's where this functionality really shines. So a good example of that would be say this volunteer form. It's very to the point, straightforward, simple one page form, which has some inputs and labels and check boxes. This would be a really good fit for being able to upload this image and then turn that into a power app with this new express design. In this case, it's actually an electronic form, but there's nothing stopping you as well for physically drawing out on a piece of paper a form and using that as your upload. I just didn't do that because I have the worst handwriting and drawing capabilities, so I'm sure the model wouldn't recognize my very poor attempts at handwriting a form. So let's walk through the process. We're gonna click next. And here we'll give our new application a name. So this is an application for volunteer signups. For the image, you can upload your own or there are some sample images if you just wanna test out the functionality and see how it works. But we're gonna upload our volunteer signup form. So we're gonna to go to the upload my own and click in there and that will pop open a explorer window where we can select our volunteer form. So we're gonna select the volunteer form and click open. And you'll notice when I did that under the format, it's automatically recommending that this be a phone format. So it was able to evaluate the form and suggest the recommended format. That doesn't mean I have to use it. I could switch it to tablet if I wanted to, but I'm gonna to stick to the phone format and see what it gives me. So with that, we'll click next. And you'll see how fast it was to analyze the form. It didn't take hardly any time at all. So what we can tell here is using that object detection, it's able to identify all of my labels. So I can hover over this and I can see that it tagged this first name as a label. And then to the right of that in green, I can see it was able to identify this as a text input. So I can just look through my form make sure that it identified everything. We see it even identified our checkboxes and the inputs next to these other checkboxes. So it did a pretty good job. The only thing that I see missing is on the cell phone. It looks like it didn't recognize that text input. So what I can do is I can actually drag my mouse over and hover over that, and I can assign a component to that. So if it isn't able to recognize everything in your form, you can manually tag it. 
So I know this should also be a text input like the other one. So I'm going to select that option. And you see on that assigned component screen, if we dive into that a little bit more, these are all of the different component types that we're able to assign and recognize with this Express Design. So it can recognize toggle sliders, ratings, combo boxes, drop downs, radio buttons, and all of that. So this gives you an idea of the type of things it's able to recognize. Now that I've verified that it maps everything correctly, we are good to go. So I'm going to click next. And the next thing you'll see here is not only can this design the front end of our Power App, but it can actually go and create a Dataverse table to store the data in. So this is just taking it even a step beyond, right? Not only creating our front ends, but creating a place for us to store this data because it already knows what fields I have on that form. So it knows what columns I should have in a table if we were to create a data repository for this in Dataverse. So I'm actually gonna walk through that process and let it create a Dataverse table for me to store this information. So you see when we do that, it brings up our form again and it's going to show the different tagging options. So I can look on the columns applied section here on the right hand side and see all the columns it recognized and the data type that it's assuming that that should be. So if anything is missing from here, I can tell right off the bat that it looks like it didn't pick up first name. I can do the same thing we did earlier when I didn't recognize that other field, I can drag and drop my cursor here over the first name and then we can map that property. So I need a column here for first name that should be a text type. So I'm gonna save that. And we see that added here on the right hand panel at the bottom. And for these check boxes, this could be a little bit tricky. There are multiple ways from the back end side that we might handle storing that data for these check boxes. We might want individual columns for each one with a yes or no value, or we might have a single column, maybe that's like a multi-line where we have comma separated values for all of the options chosen. In this case, maybe let's go with the individual columns for the checkboxes option. So we need to do some mapping here. So let's drag and drop our cursor and let's modify this because it looked like it picked up all of these different field types as one object for the field. So what we're gonna do actually is shrink this down a bit and only select the field trip driver option. And we're gonna change the display name to field trip driver. And we'll leave that as text and we'll just put a yes or no value there. So we'll save and let's just go through and map each of these check boxes. And we'll fix this one because it grouped two in there. So we'll change that to just be communications. And I'm actually just gonna leave all the others as they are because I don't think we're gonna need all those. I might reduce this form a bit. So we should be good to go. We can also define the table properties here on the right hand side. You see if I click that, we can further define the display name of this table as well as the primary name column, which is kind of used as a unique identifier almost. So I'm gonna leave that as last name. Everything looks good there. And now we'll just click next. So it's gonna give us again a preview of everything that we've defined here. So all of our columns, their names and their data types. We'll just confirm that it looks good and we'll click create and that will create that Dataverse table for us to store our data. All right, so the process finished and it just opened up our brand new Power App that it created from that form. So if we compare what it produced us here with the form that we started from, it's not too bad. Of course, we have a little bit of tweaking we need to do, but this cut down the amount of work involved pretty significantly. So that's really the big takeaway here is when you're using this image functionality with Express Design, don't expect it to be pixel perfect. The goal here is to cut down on the amount of effort needed to get started. So it's gonna add the elements on the screen for you and as we saw, create the Dataverse table which reduces a lot of the upfront effort, but you're still going to need to go in and manipulate the UI just a bit to get it really pixel perfect. Now we see it created the app. What about that Dataverse table? Let's verify that it actually created that. So if we go back to make.powerapps.com and expand out the data tab and go to tables. So if we scroll down here, there it is. There's the volunteer sign up table and I can see all of the data columns that I created here for us. So we should be able to, again, do a little bit of tweaks here to the UI, like maybe adjust some of the styling here. So I actually don't want this footer information and we'll remove the logo. And I don't even want all of those other fields. So let's just clean this up a bit. Now I won't bore you with the details of me going through and configuring the styling of this app. I mainly wanted to show you how easy it is to upload that image and get it to actually add in all the elements on the screen for us. We'll finish the loop here quickly by going to our data tab and selecting add data, searching for our volunteer signups table and Dataverse that it created for us as part of that process. 
and we'll just add that into a data source so that we can say add a submit button into this application and have that go do maybe something like a patch statement to patch all this data into that table. So that was the image functionality. Now let's take a look at the Figma integration that's also a part of this. Because if you recall, on that homepage, we also have this option here to start from a Figma file. Now as part of this Figma integration, they actually provide us with a Figma UI toolkit. So this toolkit gives us what we need in Figma to be able to make UI design comps for Power Apps. So if you haven't used Figma before, it is a free application. So you simply go to figma.com and you sign up for your free account. So it's really just a wireframing tool that is commonly used in the industry. So we can reference this Power Apps Figma toolkit to understand how we can use Figma to design a Power App. So this documentation will walk us through the individual elements that are supported and what's not supported. So right off the bat, you'll see that we don't support as part of the toolkit yet, charts, galleries, icons, shapes, or tables. As a workaround for all this, you can use images as placeholders for those individual elements if you wanna use those in your app design. They actually include as part of this a sample application so you can get an idea for the type of UI that you can prototype in your wireframes on Figma that will be able to import with this integration. And this toolkit includes two options for being able to design a power app based off of the phone layout. And if we expand in on that, it's going to give us these individual items with all of the different control types to use in our wireframe. So we can see different containers, styling for buttons and labels, inputs, toggles, sliders, all of those supporter controls. We have different widgets essentially that we can use inside of our wireframes that we might create here in Figma. Then we have the same for the tablet layout as well. So the main takeaway about using this Figma option is to only use the components that are provided in this kit. Otherwise, you run the risk of your design not being translated correctly with the express design functionality and getting an error. Now, I really don't want to get into the ins and outs of Figma in this video because that really calls for a whole separate video on its own if you've never used Figma before to understand the ins and outs of it. So in order to demo the concept of how it works to take a Figma file and make it create a Power App, we'll just use this sample app that they include as part of the Power Apps Figma UI toolkit. So what I'll need to do to complete this process in my app is actually right click on this sample app tab in Figma and we'll copy the link to this page. And we'll go back to make.powerapps.com and we'll select the option here on start from Figma. So we'll give our application a name. So we'll just call this sample Figma app for now. And here we can paste in that link we just copied from that sample app of the Power Apps UI toolkit. And the other thing that's asking is the Figma personal access token. So let me walk you through how we get that. So you're gonna to go to figma.com and you're gonna make sure you're logged into your account, which again, you can get for free. And we'll click on the upper right hand corner next to your name. And then here we should have a drop down and an option for settings. So we're gonna click settings. And then below here on the screen, we have an option to create a personal access token. So I'll put something in here like testing Power Apps Figma integration. And once I put in a description for that and click enter, it's going to create the personal access token for me that I can copy in my app. So we'll select copy this token, go back to our app and paste that in here. Now we choose the format we wanna optimize this for and this sample app is optimized for phones. So we're gonna select that option and click create. So now this is going through and it's actually going to create that power app for us based on our Figma file. And I think what you'll find with this approach is it's more pixel perfect than say the upload from image option. So you see we have this nice landing page. If we look at our tree view, we see it also created two other pages. So unlike the upload from image where we can only have a single page form, we can create in Figma a multi-screen application wireframe and have that be imported. So we have our start screen, we have a screen for sign up, which has different fields and inputs like radio buttons. We have toggle buttons, slider controls, and even drop downs. And then we have our thank you page. And if we expand out some of these screens just to see the elements that it created for us. So the thank you page, for example, is inserting an image. So it did the work for us of taking the image from Figma 
and uploading that in our Power App. So if we were to go to, say, our Media tab here on the left-hand side, we'll see all the referenced images used in the design of this app in Figma uploaded here in local storage. So the only thing you'll want to watch out for is we've talked about performance in some videos in the past is make sure the images you're using in Figma are optimized because we do have a limit of the amount of media files that we can have stored locally in our Power Apps. So we see a few images and label controls being used here and a rectangle control as well. On the sign up page, this is interesting. You'll see that I created our submit button for us, but also it put in a form for us automatically based off of the details that we had in the Figma file. So it has everything built up for me. We see that it's defaulting to a new form mode. All I would have to do is create my backend data source and add that here and bind that to my form and I'd be good to go. And then of course, bind our buttons to be actionable. So like the submit button would submit the form and on the start screen here, the RSVP now would take us to the sign up screen. So it's not gonna do any of the functionality for us. This is just getting us the UI and the look and feel placed on our applications, but it's pretty powerful functionality here. So that was all that I have for you today. Really curious for you all to try out this new functionality and let me know what you think by dropping a note in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, if you found this helpful, please hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.